I mean, alright, time we made an electronics video, isn't it? I know what some of you are saying, fudging hell, fudging hell it's about time. I just haven't had much to do electronics videos of. But I thought, in today's video, I would make a VU meter. Not just a simple germanium diode based circuit. No, we don't want to put with that. This is the circuit that I think will work using ordinary silicon diodes. So we've got our meter here, then we've got a rectifier and an op amp to boost the signal from the line output of whatever it's connected to. And this variable resistor here adjusts the, well, calibration basically, or sensitivity or whatever you want to call it. So I think it's about time I built this up and see if it works. Well, let's see if this thing works. I made a few design changes while I was building the circuit up, so... I changed the 10k resistor to a 1k resistor because that might impede... A 10k might impede the um, signal to the meter a bit too much, and I also added this 100k, just to give it a little bit of input impedance. So, let's turn this on and see if it works. Okay, nothing smoking, that's good. So I've got some music queued up, ready to play into this. So, um, let's see if it works. This is real 8-bit music. Not just silly Nintendo stuff. Well, I'm not seeing any deflection from the meter. Uh, maybe it's just not sensitive enough. Okay, let's start the music again. I'm gonna turn this up and see if anything happens. No, nope, that's all the way open, so that should be like open loop gain now. Still not getting anything. Hmm, is this is even working. Alright, I know. First rule of debugging Thou shalt check voltages. Alright, let's check, see. Right, so I've got the meter's ground clip on the um, ground wire, so, uh. Let's see if there's any negative voltage getting into the chip. Okay, about negative 9.6. Well, that's where it should be. Let's see if we got positive. I know you can't really see the meter at the moment. I'm trying to do this without shortening any pins together. About 9.8. It's a little unbalanced, but it's getting in. So we got voltage. So why isn't this working? Is there anything coming out of the chip? Have we got anything going into the circuit? Alright, uh, let's hook up my oscilloscope and see. I've already come prepared and clipped a wire onto the end of the probe so I can just stick that in there. The scope's on, let's start the music up again. Okay, I'm going to plug this to our input, wherever our input is. It's right there. It's very difficult to do this one-handed. But we'll get there. Okay, no input signal getting in, so no wonder it's not working. Actually, no, I haven't even plugged that into the right hole on the board. Right. Okay, yeah, we're definitely getting an input signal. Is there anything coming out of the chip, then? Okay, just put that in there. No, there is absolutely no output. There's absolutely nothing coming out of that chip. So I wonder, maybe the chip's faulty. There's always a possibility. Go and see if I've got a spare anywhere and replace that and see if that works. Trying another chip and still nothing. Although I think I found a problem. I don't think this board is very good. And it's not connecting. As if I just probe around with my thing, I can sometimes get that to come back to life. 
and get stuff on the scope that corresponds to the music that's playing. So I'm going to try and build this up on a different board and see if we get better results. Yep, I'm probing the input of the chip and there is just nothing going in there. The oscilloscope line is completely flat. Wasn't that funny? This needs a refreshing change. Certainly is a refreshing change. It actually works. It was just this thing that didn't work. Okay, so... Let's see how accurate this thing is. So let me just explain the setup here. We have my trusty Vestafire multi-track tape deck, which is connected up to my computer's output. And then the output of this is connected up to my meter circuit. So I can calibrate the meter. So I'll start some music playing from the computer, some Amiga music. Now bear in mind that this is only measuring the left output. So that's just hovering around the zero, so let me adjust that so this also zero. Yeah, I think we're about there. Maybe just a little bit too sensitive, so let me back that off a bit. Really need something where the levels don't change that much. Like a 1 kilohertz test tone, which I cannot be asked to set up right now, so I'll just load up some very simple music when I can find it. Okay, some very simple chip music. Right, let's get that so it's just peaking at the zero. Okay, yeah, that's hovering around zero, that's about And this one is doing about the same. So I'd say I've got that calibrated just right. Okay, well, let's have a listen to that just channel by channel. Okay, so that's good between three and zero. Let's see what this one is saying. I was reading a little list, but this one is more RMS. Alright, let's see channel 2. Okay, we got about 5 there, and we're reading about 5 there. So, negative 5 on both of them. Actually, that is a little bit low, I'm just going to... Yep, I would say they're both reading exactly the same now. Alright, so we know this thing is working and working good. I think it's about time to put this onto a proper board. And by proper board I mean... yeah. Of course I could have the boards made, but I don't want to endorse any professional services or anything. Because I don't advertise on this channel. You might have noticed that there are zero ads on my videos, and if you do see ads on my videos, well, YouTube has put them there because of, I might have used copyrighted music or something, but for the majority of my videos, they're ad free. I don't use paid VPNs, I use a free one. Ooh, look at this, oh, it's so good. This is the VPN you should get if you want to protect your privacy and stuff. Oh, look at this. That's basically what people sound like when they advertise. The Paul Dukan channel is not endorsing this product. Nicolas sponsoring the Paul Dukan YouTube channel. Well, here it is on the board. And it's working. And here it is on top of my oscilloscope. So what's the purpose of building this meter? Well, it's for monitoring when I'm doing, well, monitoring the levels when I'm mixing my music and things. See, here's a tape recorder, which has got all the meters, 
although I only use the left two, which is the left and right. Thing is, in order to see those meters, I have to pull all this out, and it's just more hassle than it's really worth. Now in this meter here, which is quite accurate, I can do that a whole lot better. Let me just turn off my drums. Now, although this only monitors the left channel, that's all I need because when I'm monitoring the mix, I actually monitor in mono, even though the mix is in stereo. Because the thing is, you know, the left and right panning can throw off your perception of how loud each track is. So, monitoring the mix in mono, if I know it sounds good in mono, then I know it's going to sound really good when I flip that switch for stereo. And that's the whole purpose of this meter. So, that seems to be pretty successful, so until next time, goodbye. And now the temperatures are finally returning to more where they should be. I'm going to go out for a while.